Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. In the last video, I described making this leaf out of my exploded lampshade. But this is also an interesting project on its own, which is a stand where I can display this or Christmas ornaments or whatever small thing that really doesn't stand on its own. But for this one, I have to frank, uh, thank Frank, who showed me this technique of the bending uh, this piece here is cherry that is bent. I used a form and then he steamed his. I borrowed my wife's pressure cooker to steam and bend this one. And then for the base itself, that is, uh, I wanted to have it off center to provide a little bit more of the balance. So that's where we get into the multi axis turning. So you remember this? No, I didn't use the infinite axis chuck for it, but this is from a article in American Woodturner some years ago, but I have modified it so that it uses the same work platform as the infinite axis chuck, so that I have both infinite axis and, in this case, this is parallel axis. So with that, I'm able to make the base of this which has a little off center so that it distributes the weight better. Remember that old that cherry that I did some time ago of just making billets? Well, this whole stand is made out of that old cherry project. So let's make the stand for my leaf and other ornaments or projects. This is cherry from a neighbor's tree cut down over three years ago. At that time I rough turned it into billets waxed it and set it aside to dry. Since air dried wood depends easier than kiln dried wood, I'll use it for this project. I cut off a portion of the billet and split it using a wedge. Splitting generally follows the grain and I don't want any cross grain in this piece. However, there is more to rough down. I've started between centers trying to align the grain with the turning axis. This is also to avoid short cross grain later. I'm turning it down, then cutting a tenon. Now for this long spindle. Long and thin means flexible and hard to turn. I'm starting from the tailstock end. Keeping it thicker will help to reduce flexing and chatter. I want just a little feature on this end but I'll keep the life center in place and not part it off. That would let the end whip around like crazy. For me, this is mostly skew work. I can get it more smooth with my skew than with a gouge. Then gradually work down the spindle about an inch at a time.
Now near the headstock, the wood is fairly stable. I'm cutting a base feature plus a small tenon. Then thoroughly sand the spindle. After parting off the tailstock end, I can sand the very end. I have to hold it with my other hand to stabilize it from whipping. Frank used an electric fry pan to steam his spindle. After discussing steaming with my wife, she's letting me use her fancy new electric pressure cooker. It has way too many features for this task. I'm experimenting with it to do what I need. I'm totally guessed that 10 minutes of steam pressure will be enough. If I'm wrong, I'll have to put it back in for more. This thing measures time when it is at pressure so the time at steam will be accurate. It has just a little water in the bottom, then a rack. I'm also putting in a small metal measuring cup to keep my spindle out of the water. The 10 minutes is a bit boring. Once the timer ended, I'm bending the spindle against the curved form. A couple of clamps will hold it until it cools. It springs back about a half an inch. Now for the base. This is another piece of the same cherry mounted in my chuck. For now, I'm only trimming the end and cutting a tenon. Now I can reverse the wood for a secure mount to trim this end and cut another tenon just in case I need it later. For now, I'm attaching a work platform with double stick tape. For a bit more security, I'm adding hot belt glue also. To start with, I have the work platform with the wood mounted to my chuck so that I can shape the perimeter. The live center provides security. I'm cutting a decorative groove that I expect to need later when I trim the underside. Next, I'm mounting the eccentric chuck. I've modified this design from an American Woodturner magazine article to use the same work platform as my infinite axis chuck. I've turned the mount around almost to maximum. The live center is useful to point to the new axis. Whew! This is wild! The live center helps hold it in place. My large bull gouge is about the only tool that can handle this abuse. This is a lot like an off-center duck that I turned a while back. I stop periodically to check progress. The ghost image is not enough this time.
Then drill for the bent spin. I start with a quarter inch drill, but when I test the tenon, it is not large enough. Fortunately, I have a full set of bits in small increments. I went with a 9 64th inch bit. Then the next one up. Then sand both under power and manually. Back in the standard chuck, I'm using my skew to remove the hot melt glue. Then I can twist off the double stick tape. Finally, trim the underside using that groove I cut previously. Just in case, I'm cutting an expansion mortise while I'm trimming the tenon. Then sand and sign. To finish, I'm using shellac friction polish. Normally I would buff it at high speed, but I cannot do that with the bent spindle or the eccentric base, so I'll buff it separately. Thank you, Frank, for showing me your method for an ornament stand. I like the pressure steamer and the eccentric chuck improvements. I have one more ornament stand to try. Meanwhile, this one is definitely a keeper. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week, I make another wood turning video and add it to the eight years worth over 400 videos to choose from on my website. But please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.